Using wind instruments as an analogy for the function of Parasaurolophus's crest goes back surprisingly far. The original 1931 description of Parasaurolophus tubicin compared the looping airways of the crest to the looping airways in the chest of trumpeter swans, where it resonates with the breastbone, but also to a crumhorn, which appears to be something like an oboe, or maybe a bassoon for the larger one. A review published in Canada the following year makes it seem like he wasn't using these comparisons to say anything about the timber or tone of the sounds the animal would actually make, it was an analogy for the way that they function. The pipes in the head would vibrate the way that a wind instrument does. In the 80s and 90s, Weishample quantified a lot of this. He wanted to know what the resonant frequencies of a Parasaurolophus crest were. Since we know the dimensions of the tubes, we can say what pitches a standing wave would be stable at within them. And those pitches do just so happen to be in trombone range. For Parasaurolophus walkeri, at the low end, 48 hertz, and at the high end, 240 hertz. I haven't practiced in a long, long time. For Parasaurolophus sirtocrustatus, which I will remind you at the time was only known from smaller specimens, the range was 75 hertz to 375 hertz. The mechanism of vocalization in non-avian dinosaurs is poorly understood. Did they use a larynx, like ours, to vibrate the throat? Did they use a syrinx, like birds did? Did they use both? Did they use some weird thing, like some kind of nasal reed, as has been hypothesized? Workers have made headway on these, but our understanding is still very incomplete. 